Hello, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about the momentum gradient descent. How does the momentum work? The momentum tries to to simulate how the gravity will affect a uh, a ball. Imagine we have uh, this mountain, this mountain, and we we are trying to get to this minimum. This is our minimum, and we we are here now. Imagine we we this there is a a ball that is going uh, down to uh, by this slope the momentum will first firstly uh, the movement will be shorter and the momentum will try to give the ball a, a slightly more higher velocity in order to escape fr from this minimum in which we can stack so the ball will will have a velocity that will increase as the movement goes straight and in a few in a few epochs our ball could uh, go outside this this local minimum and try to get this uh, the global minimum so if it will help us to converge into a solution much um, much um, uh, it will help us to converge into a solution much faster than the stochastic gradient descent and it is really useful if we want to do some certain tasks so how it works first of all we define a variable that we are going to call vt as velocity we define a greek letter that will multiply the vt minus 1 so this this mean uh, these work letters represent the the importance of the last of the last uh, value of our velocity so if you give uh, a lot of importance to this value our, uh, the ball will be accelerated much more and then we plus our learning rate as we've done before multiplied by the gradient okay that that's all and when we are updating it we will do this the same our parameter is equal to our parameter minus fifty right, sorry <laughs> so this is the formula of the momentum So now we have a uh, two hyperparameters. First of all, the our learning rate as before, and the importance of the momentum. This is set use uh, usually to 0 0.9, with 0 0.9, and the learning rate as before. 0 0.00. .00. If we, if you increase this value a lot, you should uh, decrease this value in order to not escape this. Uh, because if you give a lot of momentum, it may go outside the the, the global minimum, and you won't get the global minimum ever. 
So now let's code it. Before we code it, uh, we need to uh, store. Uh, we we need to know that this this value uh, needs to be uh, stored. And how we will do that? Using a sparse map. Uh, what is a sparse map? Uh, I have written uh, this example um, to help you understand it. A sparse map. Uh, imagine we the we have this variable a uh, month, and we want to relate January to the month 31. Uh, to 31, the number 31. February to 28, and we we keep doing that until se uh, December. When we exit into month September, we will we will finally uh, get as output 31. So it helps us to relate month September to 31. Uh, there are al you can do by your uh, by yourself an implementation an implementation of a sparse map, but uh, on internet there are um, there are some implementations really optimized and so we will do that. We will use an optimate. Uh, we will use a library, a third party library. If you go to the, this link that I will write you in the description of the video, you will find the source code of the sparse matrix, or the sparse map. Sorry, you click Control Control uh, plus S, and we now need to save it into our folder. We will save in, in utils, a spare save, save. Okay. So now we can start coding it. Um, we now we now need to implement and create the default of the me. So, okay. Momentum. Okay. Uh, so now we we can start coding. Pla include eigen dot core. Include. We need to include the sparse map. In in utils, spares and the configuration. Optimizer. First, momentum. Public optimizer. Optimize. We create the sparse map. Has map that would would have variables type of scalar and array. It would be an array. And we will call that history because we will store <coughs> we will store here the the previous value of the velocity. You know what we are going to do? We are getting some errors, so we are going to in uh, to create all the the optimizers that we are going to use the nester of gradient this uh, accelerated gradient the uh, 
the other other grad other delta new item Adam de Adam new item de Ada Max MS prop And I think that that's all. Uh, two, four, six, eight, nine. Okay. Uh, I I may have forgotten some. I don't think so. Other data, other grad. Nah. Momentum. Okay. That I think that's all. Um. No. A new a new one. The amps. Graph. You may see that there are a bunch of of them. Okay, I think that's all. We can now s no. Okay. The array uh, isn't defined here, so but it's a uh, the ar uh, again array variable. So we create it as dynamic. is It's like a vector that you can do oper operations as an array. Okay, that should work. Array, array. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay, we need uh, a few variables. The learning rate, the momentum, and we are also going to define the decay. But as you saw before, it isn't necessary. The learning rate we are going hey learn rate we are going to initialize as 0 0.01 the momentum as zero point nine and the decay as zero as before. Now we are going to override the reset. 
in which we will reset Oops, sorry, clear, clear the history array and the up update void update const ali align map back the back map back back now we are going to do this one moment and I will come so now we will relate uh, we will store the gradient associated uh, to the derivative of the, the vector here in grad if the gradient dot size is equal to zero we will resize it into the vector the derivative of the vector size and grad and we will set it to zero multiply the gradient by the momentum as we saw before and the learning rate multiplied by the derivative of the vector plus the decay m decay multiplied by the vector and this operation will be array and finally we update the vector I don't know why oh sorry yeah, I forgot an equal um, that's all thank you for watching it and see you in the next video where we will see uh, the next a optimizer